Hey, this is CND Channel. I'm Chris. This is MMA for you. I'm going to be doing my Bellator 94 predictions, uh, which happens on March 28th. Overall, I actually like this card. Um, Newton versus Zayat, two of the better um, light heavyweights to fight outside the UFC. Rickles versus Syed Awad, pretty good as well. You got Trey, that just happened. Houston versus Luis Melo. I'm a. Uh, and should and see what Luis Melo has. And Rodrigo Lima versus Running Man is a good bantamweight fight. The prelims has uh, two um, t <laughs> women's fights that are uh, pretty interesting, actually. Felice Herrick, Heather Clark, and Aguilar versus Pat uh, Patricia Vedonic. Um Bruno Carvalho is on the card as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, I actually like this card. Uh, let's get started. Okay. For the light heavyweight tournament final, we have Emmanuel Newton versus Mihal Zayats. Uh, this is the main event. Uh, a lot of people know Newton from giving uh, King Mo a spinning back fist, sending him to sleep, and kind of like cradling him in his arms. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Um, and Zayats, I mean, this guy spinning back elbow, I believe, to um, Babalu. I saw it live. It was like a spinning back fist or spinning back elbow. So that was pretty, pretty. You know, I picked Baba Lou to beat Zayat, and I saw that fight live. And um, but Zayat, you know, he he's been doing really well. Um, so it's really hard to call, but I'm gonna go with Newton, the hardcore kid, a uh, really tough guy. Um, you know, contrary to getting the KO victory over King Mo, he's actually not a heavy finisher. He, um, he has 28 fights, and 11 of them have been finishes. Three of them by KO or TKO, eight of them by sub. Um, he has like a karate style stand up with some pretty underrated wrestling. Um, I believe he has some Greco. He uses a good Greco actually. Um, and if uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is solid as well, trains at Rain and King's MMA, which will really help his wrestling and overall grappling. Um, Mihal Zayat, so man, 21 and 6 record, 4 wins by KO Tico, 11 by sub. Um, and he's 31 years old. Uh, I believe he trades at Rust Fighters, one of the Shlomenko's guys. 7 fight win streak. The guy he lost to uh, before he had the win streak was uh, Vinny Magalash at M1. And he was doing very well against Vinny Magalash, showing good leg kicks. He got head kicked into fourth. It was the third or fourth, but. You know, um, he was doing really well, and quite honestly, if that head kick didn't happen, there's a good chance he could have won. Isaiah's uh, solid uh, stand up, solid Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you know. Um, and so it makes it really hard to say who, who's going to win. Um, but I'm going to go with Emmanuel Newton. But, you know, Isaiah's uh, not a bad light heavyweight. And, you know, I'm not going to say they're like great light heavyweight prospects or anything like that. They're not the type of guys I can see beating more like the upper tier of light heavyweight. But if they got into UFC, I mean, if the, if one of these guys fought um, Igor Prokryak or, or Anthony Parash or someone like that, you know, I, these guys could win. <laughs> you know, they're not... I, You know, I, I don't think that they would... Uh, get like killed and I think they'd be like mid tier guys in the UFC and that honestly considering how not deep light heavyweight has been uh, as of late that's as good as you can get as far as out you know light heavyweights outside the UFC uh, next fight after that for the lightweight tournament final we have Syed Awad versus David Rickles man I you know I feel bad here because I keep picking against Syed Awad <laughs> I picked him against Will Brooks. I picked him against uh, De Lorenzi. I'm gonna pick up, pick against him here too. <laughs> I, I here's the thing though, man. His last two fights, KOs, <laughs> you know, violent ones at that in the first round. I should pick against this guy, but you know, it's just you know, he's on a six fight win streak. Six wins by Kiritiko. Six wins by Sub. He trains at Millennia MMA. Other guys that trained there, if I'm not mistaken, Lawrence Larkin trains there. Um, has KO power and some good stand-up. David Rickles, 
Only one loss, and that's at Walter White against Carl Amasu in a fight that many thought he won. 24 years old, three fight win streak. Solid Muay Thai, he can kind of brawl, always pushing forward, good cardio. His uh, really high pressure type of guy, you, you saw that in, in his last fight against like Lloyd Woodard, always pushing forward. Really like, he can outlast guys really well. Uh, he's also got off his back. A lot of his wins actually are by triangle choke as well. Uh, he's shown a good chin, and, and that's the thing. I mean, if he stands a side of what, he could get dropped. Gotta see how his chin will hold up, but, you know, I, I gotta think that as the fight goes on, that the fight will favor Rickles. And in that sense, I'm going to pick David Rickles to win. I think it'll go past the first round. Um, I think the, the pressure and, and whatnot from Rickles um, it is going to overcome Saeed Awad. But, you know, this guy Saeed Awad, I mean, I thought Will Brooks, you know, man, I was like, I thought Will Brooks was going to win the whole thing, you know. Uh, you know, I'm really high on that kid. And here's Saeed Awad knocking him out, you know. So, you know, definitely not someone I can I can count out. Stylistically, too, this isn't the greatest matchup for David Rickles or anything like that. You know, um, guy who hits really hard. Uh, and Rickles is definitely hittable. That's, that's the other thing about him, too. But, like I said, I think Rickles will outlast them, and I'll go with a wad. Uh, uh, Rickles win this one. Next for after that, Trey Houston fights Luis Mello. Uh, Houston, you know, 10 and one record. He lost his uh, most previous belt, which was in Bellator against Billy Horn, if I'm not mistaken. Ray Naked Choke, if I'm not mistaken. 10 and one record. Four wins by Kertiko, six wins by Sub. He is a finisher, and he trains at um, Militage. Luis Mello is making his Bellator debut. Trains at Reno Vacal. Miguel Falco trains there. Uh, 20, 11, and 3 record. With 11 KOs or TKOs. 13 wins by sub. 31 on a 5 fight win streak. I gotta think. He, here, here's my, my reasoning here. Um, also, Houston's a good fighter. Um, but I gotta think with Mello here. It's... They're not putting this guy in the main card for no reason. They're, they're, usually, if you see people on the main card, it, it's definitely to promote a guy, to showcase a guy. I don't, considering that Trey Houston lost his last fight, I don't think Trey Houston's the guy they want to really promote, per se. But I could be wrong, you know? I would think that they brought in this guy from Brazil, trains out a good camp. Um. Also, another guy that trains at Run of a Cow is Luis Nogueira. You know, trains with guys like Luis Nogueira, Mikel Falco. You know, I, I would think that they kind of want to showcase this guy. Because um, that's what Bellator is about, too. Showcasing young, unknown talent. No one's heard of this guy. And, you know, maybe he can, uh, on if, when he's on the main card, they can, you know, I guess showcase him. <laughs> Keep using that word. Okay, next fight after that, Rodrigo Lima fights Ronnie Mann. One thing I like about this fight is that 135. Winner of this, most likely. I I read that if Ronnie Mann, especially if he wins, he's going to be in the next 135-pound tournament. Ronnie Mann has proven against Pat Curran and Mike Corey that he's just way too small for 145. Technical, or from a technical standpoint, though, Ronnie Mann's stand-up, it's really technical. I'm really good. Good defense. Good offense. Heavy hands. He's dropped guys that are much bigger than him. I think he dropped Mike Corey, actually. And good Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. 11 of his 21 wins are by submission. Rodrigo Lima, though. Radino. 10-1 record. Uh, 3 wins by KR Tico. 5 wins by Sub. He's 21 years old. And he trains at Tino Guerra. His overall grappling is very good. Good Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as well. But, you know, I'm get. I always pick Ronnie Man. I don't think I've ever picked against Ronnie Man and Bellator. I'm not going to start now, though. <laughs> I'm going to go with Ronnie Man. A uh, guy just has a uh, really good technical stand up. Don't know how the weight cut's going to go for him. But, um, and his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is solid as well. 
Okay, on to the prelims. We have Heather Clark versus uh, Felice Herrig. Um, Heather Clark, you know, 5-3 and three record, 2 wins by Kaotika, 3 wins by Sub. She trains at Jackson's, J Jackson Winkle John, and she is a finisher. All of her wins are by finish. Um, last time I saw her fight, though, she fought well, at XFC against Nicole Egnick, if I'm not mistaken. I think she got choked out, or I think she got submitted, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there's some beef between these two as well. Uh, Felice Herrig, 8 and 4 record, 1 win by TKO, 2 wins by Sub, she's 28, and a 3 fight win streak, trains at Team Curran. She does have a boxing background, but her grappling has really been improving as of late. You can watch the color spars of fight, you know, really good scrambling. She's not just lying down there, and it, you know. She's she's working from the bottom. If you watch her last fight against uh, Vedonic, you know, that was pretty much like grappling match. Took her down, got top control, got some dominant positions. She really improved that aspect of her game. Um, I got to go with Felice Herrick to win this one. Okay, next fight after that, we have Patrick uh, Sino uh, is it Chinopo? Uh versus Tony Fricklin. Tony Fricklin's a veteran, man. Uh, this guy, he's been there. This guy fought Anderson Silva. He's really well known for getting. Um, geez, like this really, he, he got elbowed. Uh, it was this really like upwards elbow thing that Anderson did and knocked him out. Fought Kung Lee. He got knocked out there too. <laughs> this guy last fought in June of 2007. 14 and 9 record. 6 wins by KO Tico. 8 wins by Sub. 5 losses by KO Tico. And he's on a 3 fight losing streak. To generally good guys though. Training at Militage. But with uh, Patrick, nine and two record, eight wins by KRT, and one one by decision. He's twenty three years old. I um, mean, this guy definitely has some finishing power with his strikes. I'll go with uh, Patrick Chenoval to win this one. Next right after that, James Edson Berto fights Bruno Carvalho. Well, with Berto, he has a sixteen and ten record with one draw, five wins by KRT, six wins by sub. Um, he's on a two fight losing streak. However, um, you know, nine of his runs are by sub, and a lot of them are actually by heel hook. He has some really good leg locks. Um, but Bruno Cavallo, 8 and 2 record, 4 runs by KO Tico, 2 runs by sub. He's 30 years old, trains at CM System, the Cristiano Marcelo System, if I'm not mistaken. On a two fight win streak, um, Cavallo. Jeez, I, I want to say he's fought overseas. As well, um, but yeah, I gotta go with Bruno Carvalho to win this one. Okay, next fight I thought Ronnie Rogers fights Joe Tamanglo. Okay, with Rogers, he has a 15 and 10 record, three wins by KO Tico, eight wins by Sub. Also has four losses by Sub, but he's on a four fight win streak and trains at Finney's Hit Squad. With Joe, 17 and four record with one draw, four wins by KO Tico, ten wins by Sub. Uh, he's 28 years old on an 8 fight win streak. Uh, interesting thing about Joe though, all of his losses are by fin. You know, he's been finished in all of his losses. Two of them by KO Tico, two of them are sub. Regardless of that, I got Joe uh, Taimonglo to win this one. Okay, next one after that, we have Rob Horton versus Augusto Sakai. Don't know anything about Horton, it's his first pro MMA bout and. Yeah, so I can't say anything about him. And with Augusta Sakai, 3-0 undefeated record. All of those wins are by KO or TKO. And he's never been past the first round. Gotta go with Augusta Sakai to win this one. Okay, next right after that, Jessica Aguilar fights Patricia Vidonic. You know, this uh, fight, it's, it's nice to see Jessica Aguilar fight. Because she doesn't get a lot of fights. <laughs> I hear she actually took a full-time job. She quit that job and, and is, once again, full-time fighter. Um, but, you know, nothing against Patricia Vidonic, but it's the same story with, like, Felice Herrig. It's like she, you know, with Vidonic, she lost to Herrig. Two fights later, she fights her again. Same here. <laughs> you know, Patricia Vidonic, she's... She was de defeated by Aguilar back in February 2012. I think it was two or three fights ago. 
now she's rematching her. Just goes to show, like, how little female... Like, I don't really know what Bellator is trying to do with their uh, female fighters. And they have a stranglehold on the best ones. Jessica Evil Eye at 125 and Jessica Aguilar at 115. And Felice Herrig's really good, too. I'd like to see these girls, actually... I think they also have, like, Mariana Kafetz. Um, who else? Holly Holm. Yeah, I'd like to see a lot of these girls just fighting an Invicta against, uh, quite honestly, better competition. You know, no, nothing personal against like uh, Vedonic. It's just I got her speeding her uh, before, and I can't really see the fight being that much different. You now it's Aguilar, fourteen to four record, two wins by KO Tico, seven wins by Sub. She's thirty years old on a five fight win streak. Trains on American Top Team. She's actually a consensus number one female uh, strawweight fighter. And her stand up and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu have always been solid. Uh, with Vodonic, though, you know, three wins by sub, four wins by decision. 33 years old. Uh, good Brazilian Jiu Jitsu game, but I gotta go with uh, Jessica Aguilar to win this one. Like I said, I'd love to see Aguilar at 115. And, and Invicta, though. I'd like to see her fight. Oh. John Calder, that'd be cool. Yeah, you know, um, that'd be really cool. She's already beaten Carla Esparza. Um, there's like Claudia Gadalha, you know, um, I think she trains with Tasha Torres at ATT. Um, you know, a couple more wins, Rose Namajunas. Um, uh, who else is at 115? I'm trying to think <laughs> right now. That she hasn't already fought. But yeah, you know, I'd like to see Aguilar fight in Invicta, to be honest with you. And finally, uh, Kenny Moss fights Julian Williams. Um, with Moss, he has a 5 and 3 record, 2 wins by KO Tico, 3 wins by Sub. He also has 2 losses by KO Tico and 1 loss by Sub. So pretty much all of his fights, win or lose, they end in a finish. And with Julian Williams, 3 and 1 record, all 3 of his wins are by submission. He's 30 years old, 20. Yeah. He's on a two-fight win streak. And some pretty solid Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I'll go Julian Williams to win this one. Uh, so that's pretty much it for my Bellator 94 predictions. If you have any comments, just leave them below. That's it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.